In 1988, a TV series emerged that would change the way we looked at the American family. Remember the first time you caught a glimpse of the Connors' household chaos? Whether you were laughing at their humor, shocked by their antics, or touched by the raw, unfiltered moments, one thing's for sure rose on brought a new kind of reality to television. With a classic Hollywood actor in the mix, the show added a touch of familiarity to the chaos. Who was your favorite from the ensemble cast? The laughter-inducing moments, the jaw-dropping twists, and the heart-wrenching scenes, they're all part of the journey that unfolds episode after episode. But wait, there's more. Stay tuned because, as you continue watching, you'll discover funny, shocking, and even sad facts about the show that might just change the way you see it. The Connors have more surprises in store. Now, let's reminisce a bit. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series? Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear how Rose On left its mark on your life. So buckle up for a trip down memory lane and prepare for the unexpected as we unravel the layers of Rose On. Keep watching and don't forget to share your experiences. The 1988 TV series Rose On left an enduring impact on the American sitcom landscape. Running for nine seasons, it tackled real life issues with a refreshing and unfiltered perspective. The show's legacy lies in its portrayal of a working class family facing everyday challenges, providing a relatable mirror to viewers' lives. One reason for its lasting relevance is the unapologetic approach to addressing societal norms and taboos. It broke new ground by featuring a strong female lead who was not afraid to voice opinions on issues ranging from economic struggles to parenting. The series resonated by depicting the complexities of family dynamics in a humorous and heartfelt manner. Furthermore, its impact on television is evident in the portrayal of unconventional characters and storylines. Roseanne was a pioneer in presenting characters who did not conform to traditional stereotypes. This authenticity in character representation has continued to influence subsequent TV productions, contributing to a more diverse and inclusive entertainment landscape. Its relevance today can also be attributed to its timeless exploration of societal challenges. Many of the issues addressed, such as economic hardships, parenting dilemmas, and the struggle for identity are still prevalent in contemporary society. The show's ability to capture these universal themes allows it to remain relatable across generations. In conclusion, Rose On's impact and legacy endure due to its groundbreaking approach to storytelling, unfiltered portrayal of real-life issues, and lasting influence on the representation of diverse characters in television. Its ability to resonate with audiences on a personal level has solidified its place in the annals of television history. In the 1988 TV series, Matt Roth and Brian Kerwin both played roles as Jackie's boyfriends. Later, they, along with Laurie Metcalf, appeared together in a Desperate Housewives episode titled Bang. Sarah Gilbert, known for her role in the series, is the half-sister of Melissa Gilbert from Little House on the Prairie. Dabs Greer, who portrayed the Reverend Aldman on Little House on the Prairie, also made an appearance. George Clooney, in the first season, played Rose Honest Boss at the factory. He took on this role in 1988 after being fired from Facts of Life in 1987. ABC abruptly ended the second run of the show in 2018, despite a prior renewal for the next season. The cancellation followed with a racist remark by the lead, Rose on Barr, on Twitter. She likened Valerie Jarrett to a mix of an Islamic terrorist and a gorilla. The fallout was swift, consulting producer Wanda Sykes resigned, and Barr's attempts at apologizing failed. ABC president Channing Dungey promptly announced the show's cancellation on multiple platforms, later confirmed by Disney CEO Robert A. Iger. In response, Rose Ann Barr expressed a willingness to appear on any ABC show to explain her perspective. However, the network swiftly terminated her show, attributing it to the offensive tweet. Barr, who had voted for Donald Trump, later reflected on the situation in an interview with her son, Jake. Despite her attempt at clarification, ABC severed ties with Barr, leaving only John Goodman standing by her side. Notably, Charlie Sheen, facing his own controversies, bid farewell to Rose on on Twitter. He expressed no sympathy, echoing his signature winning catchphrase and hinting at a potential reboot of his own sitcom. In the aftermath, the show faced an abrupt end, mirroring controversies surrounding other sitcom stars like Charlie Sheen, familiar with politically incorrect remarks. The cancellation marked a swift and definitive response to Barr's Twitter misstep.
The Connors faced an unusual atmosphere on set following Rose on Barr's abrupt departure. Glory Metcalf described the scene as awkward yet not awkward, right but not right, and wrong but not wrong. The cast found themselves checking in with each other, navigating an unexpected shift in dynamics. Marcy Carsey, part of the production team behind the show, also reflected on the scandals surrounding the stars of her top two shows, The Cosby Show and this one. She expressed surprise at Rose on Barr's political stance and recalled Bill Cosby as a wonderful collaborator, making it clear that life delivers unexpected shocks even after decades. Adding a personal touch to the dynamics, it's revealed that Rose on had a crush on John Goodman, reciprocated by Laurie Metcalf. Such nuances in the cast's interpersonal relationships added another layer to the series. In summary, the Connors faced an unusual situation on set. Marcy Carsey reflected on the unexpected scandals surrounding the show's stars, and the cast's personal dynamics brought an interesting dimension to the series. Marcy Carsey and Tom Werner, executive producers of the show, reported mistreatment by the lead, affecting the production dynamics. Rob Reiner, known for All in the Family, drew parallels between the two shows, noting the distinctive role of the lead as a reactionary character. Unlike All in the Family, where a liberal actor played a reactionary, the lead portrayed a version of themselves. Stand-up comedian Norm MacDonald discussed consoling the lead after their downfall, revealing the emotional toll they endured. McDonald disclosed that his comedian friend, Louis C.K., reached out to the lead, describing them as broken and constantly crying. The two shared advice, acknowledging the unique challenges they faced, with McDonald highlighting the perspective that others might not fully grasp the experience. In the realm of television, these insights shed light on behind-the-scenes dynamics and the personal toll of controversies. Marcy Carsey and Tom Werner faced challenges, and Rob Reiner drew comparisons to iconic TV dynamics. Norm MacDonald's account provided a glimpse into the aftermath, emphasizing the shared struggles of comedians navigating unforeseen hardships, a narrative. The Connor family, residing at 714 Delaware Street, became synonymous with the blue-collar American experience. Interestingly, the exterior of their house, depicted at 619 Runnymede Avenue in Evansville, Indiana, added a touch of reality to the fictional setting. In a notable crossover, Morgan Fairchild took on the role of Marla, Nancy Bartlett's girlfriend, on the show. Simultaneously, she portrayed Chandler's mom on NBC's Friends during the same season. A rare feat, Fairchild found herself on two top 10 series airing on competing networks. Within the Connor household, the dynamics were subtly portrayed through the characters addressing. While David respectfully referred to Rose Ann and Dan as Mr. and Mrs. Connor, Mark, in a more familiar tone, simply called them Dan and Rose Ann. The show's attention to detail, from the authentic address to the nuanced character interactions, contributed to its genuine portrayal of working-class life. The Connors' residence on 714 Delaware Street became more than just a TV set, it embodied the essence of relatable family struggles and triumphs. Rose Ann Barr's return to the TV series in 2018 came with a condition she vowed would to stay off Twitter during the reboot's pre-production. Producers at Carsey Werner and ABC were concerned about her history of making racist remarks on the platform. Despite their explicit request, Barr failed to keep her promise, eventually leading to significant consequences for the show. In a DVD commentary, Rose on Barr revealed her practice of not retaining writers for more than two seasons, citing that she believed the best work was extracted from them in that time frame. This practice had notable consequences as writers like Joss Whedon and Chuck Laura, who later achieved success in their own right, were part of the revolving door of talent on the show. Matt Roth, known for his role as Laurie Metcalf's abusive boyfriend Fisher, had a reunion with Metcalf in 2006 on Desperate Housewives. In this series, Metcalf played Carolyn Bigsby, while Roth portrayed Art Shepard. Their collaboration showcased the interconnectedness of actors in the industry, spanning different projects over the years. The behind-the-scenes dynamics, including Barr's Twitter controversies and her unconventional approach to retaining writers, offer insights into the challenges faced by the production team. These factors, along with the interplay of actors across various shows, contribute to the intricate tapestry of the TV landscape. The unfolding events and relationships within the industry shed light on the less glamorous aspects of television production, revealing the complexities that often go unnoticed by the audience.